Tonight is a very special investigation. The Oliver House, one of the most haunted places in Toledo. It's one of the most notorious places for harboring haunted activity. And they have not opened their doors in 10 years. But tonight, they've opened their doors for me. And I cannot wait for the ghost doctor to get in and see what we can find here. And throughout the night, Paranormal activity here ramps up so much. Whoa, 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 whoa. That this is one roller coaster ride you have to see for yourself. Wow, this thing's going nuts to believe. I want to know you're here. Can you touch my hand? My name is Chris Boris, and I'm the first ever ghost behaviorist. I interact with spirits by studying their behavior patterns. So you were involved in that crash, correct? And I come armed with psychology, sociology, and ancient texts to connect with a spirit on a higher level, which has never been done before. Oh, oh I got goosebumps. I love that. that. With these new skill sets, I can talk with them. Did you die in this room? Why were you here? Interview them and really get into their psyche. He wants to kill somebody, which in turn helps me to diagnose them. <laughs> Hauntings in this world are on the rise, and it's because these bigger issues are at play. I'm here to counsel the dead and help empower the homeowners they haunt. Ooh, you're right here, aren't you? The next level of ghost hunting is here because the ghost doctor is in. So we are in what used to be the main entrance of the Oliver House when it was built back in the 1850s. This used to be a luxury hotel in downtown Toledo. And over in this side here, this used to be the original entrance, which, which has changed over the years. But this place used to be a hotel for about 30 years. Then it switched over to being a flop house at the end of the century there. And then around the 1920s, this place became a warehouse of many different stores that set up shop here. And one of the businesses that actually stored their wares here was a bank. This used to be a bank vault back in the day where people used to store their belongings. So it was away from the main bank and robbers couldn't get to it. Now, even though this area is used for a banquet hall today, there are a lot of spirits that actually roam this part of the building. According to one psychic that used to do tours of this building, there is one spirit here that used to be a servant lady that was murdered back in the 1800s. She actually was starting to set up a burlesque house type situation and she got involved with a business tycoon and he didn't want his reputation tarnished so he had her murdered. Of course, that story is all hearsay, so we're gonna try our best to substantiate those claims with our investigation tonight. Some of the other spirits that roam here are a lot of children. There's children of boys, children of girls from moving this place with a flop house. So hopefully we can make contact with those spirits tonight. Now in this area right here, this is where the old smoking lounge used to be for the uh, for the men back when this place was a hotel. People have reported hearing a male figure, interacting with a male figure in this location. And a really cool piece of history is this wallpaper right here is actually the very first wallpaper that existed in Toledo. So it's kind of a cool historical artifact right there. Now on the other side of this banquet hall, we have more spirits in this area Mainly, by the ladies' bathroom, sometimes they report hearing a little girl sobbing. <laughs> now, this area also has its own special ghost, mainly of a woman whose husband ended up leaving for the war, and she ended up staying here for a very long time, but he never ended up coming back for her. And she was later one of the caretakers when this place became a flop house. Now today this place is used as a fancy restaurant, but this place is also home to a lot of spirit children from when this place was a flop house. So I'm hoping we can talk to at least one child tonight or the wife that was left behind. There's one picture of Mr. Oliver, the person that built this place and it's right there. Bears a striking resemblance to Tim Allen. I don't think so, Tim. All right, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn out all the lights and get this investigation started. Oh, 
All right, so I'm gonna start in this main area first and see if I can contact one of the spirits that likes to hang around in this area. All right, so here we've got a motion sensor on this device. If something touches it, the blue lights will go off, all kinds of crazy stuff. And these are my K2 meters. All right, if there's anything in the area that wishes to speak to me, I am your vessel. I am ready to hear you, get your word, get your story out. So the person I'm really hoping to contact tonight is the servant woman that was murdered on this premises. Word has it that there used to be tunnels underneath this place that led out to the Toledo Bay. And according to the psychic, that's what they did. They killed her and took her body out to the bay. All right, so this is an ovulus. This is what I like to call a voice box for the dead. Uh, usually it'll take energy in an area and associate a word to it. If you wanna speak to me and put a word on this device, now's the time to do so. If there's anything you wanna tell me, I'm here for you. Whoa, 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 check that out. The temperature reading is 666. I hope that's not uh, evil or anything. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who is this? Is, is this a servant lady? Can you do that again? It's kind of interesting when I pointed out it was 666, it automatically jumped up to 667. And it wasn't, and it wasn't me because the, the orange lights would have went off. So who touched this device? Was it one of the kids? Touch it again. Man, that's so weird. Right when I said, oh, oh, there we go. Can you do that again, please? Boy, you're touring with us, aren't you? Can you just spike that again so I know you're here? Is that noise? Oh, it's the floor. I keep hearing a click, 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 click. Are you, are you doing that? Are you confirming that you hear the clicks too? Is that why you're, you hit that meter? All right. All right. I hate to move away from this location. Is this your bar? That was me. All right, I'm gonna move over to the table. Since you're not giving me a lot of interaction. Okay, I'm gonna put that there, the obelisk here. If you wanna spike any of those things, I am here for you. So I need you, if you want to interact with me, I need you to touch this device on command. Can you touch this device again and, and try to move it so lights appear on that? Would you like some music? I've got some orchestral pieces here I can play. Can you touch that meter or anything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Highway malicious. I've never seen those words appear on that. Now what's interesting about this interaction is after I started playing the music, I must have triggered something that caused two words to appear in succession on this device. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We know the servant woman haunts this area and reflecting on both words caught in the ovulus seems to be a chilling reminder of the way she was murdered and the way her body was taken out through a secret highway of tunnels to the river. And as I began doing an interview right there on the spot to talk about how amazing this was, we were quickly interrupted. 
So I was sitting at the table and I got two words back to back on the obelisk, which has only happened only twice to me. Okay. I see, I see. Is that you? Are you, are you trying to get our attention? Are you mad that I'm taking the focus away from you? Every time I look away from you, you, you spike the meter. That was crazy, I was doing the interview and I, I saw it blinking out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> so are you having fun? Is, I, I kind of wonder if this is the, the child. Are you, a, are you the child? Can you spike that meter if I guess who you are? The servant woman? Are you someone that worked here? Are you male? Story. story. Yep, I definitely want to get your story out. But you got to play ball with me. I, I need something on command. I want to make sure that what I'm getting is uh, actually something. All right, so this is a very sensitive Panasonic recorder, very old, but it picks up a lot of interesting things and voices. Is there somebody here that'd like to tell me your name? If so, what is your name? Are you playing with our devices? All right, let me go ahead and listen to this here. This was amazing. After asking what is your name, I ended up getting an answer. If so, what is your name? Are you playing with our devices? Alright, I'm going to put this device back on the bar here. If you want to spike that, you go ahead and be my guest. I'm going to take attention away from that and do something different. If I see that lighten up, I'm coming back to you, mister. I think for now I'm going to uh, not concentrate on that spirit anymore and focus on the children and see if I can get some interaction going with them. I've got some fun toys for you. Got a paddle ball. All you have to do is spike this meter, put little lights on it, and it'll show me that you like this. And you can play with it. Got some jacks. I know there are little, two little boys here and a little girl. If you spike this mirror, I got some cool stuff to show you. Moments later, I ended up capturing a sound that almost sounds like a child's voice, which we've amplified here. I could have swore I heard a child's voice. Was that you? All right, so I'm gonna set up a camera here. If any of these meters go off, I wanna know about it. After setting up some cameras to record any activity in my absence, I then made my way downstairs to the basement. So I've got a couple REM pods. I'm gonna place these at the doorways. If anything comes in, I will know about it. All right, got this place laced up, and now we can begin. All right, if there's any spirit down here, I've got a device in my hand. If you touch it, then I will know that you're here. I've also have another device in my hand. You can put words on this device and... Highway. Highway, again with the highway. And I wonder if it's because we're underground now and they said this is where the tunnels would have been that lead out to the uh, Toledo Bay, so... Maybe it's picking up that word in this area as well. Very, very interesting. Highway again. As I made my way deeper into the basement, I ended up finding a restricted area of the building where those old tunnels were located. All right, so I'm going to investigate best I can here and see if we can get something to pop up. All right, I'm gonna put that meter down there. I'm gonna get out my ovulus here. See if we pick up any words down here. 
there's any spirits here that need help? Unresolved issues? Did anyone pass through here on the way out? All right, that just moved a little bit. Was that you? Can you do that again? Were you brought through this way on your way out to the... Uh... Huh, did you touch that again? Were you brought through here on the way out to the Toledo Bay? Hmm. All right, that's the third time you've done that when I mentioned passing through here. Can you tell me your name? Were you murdered here? Touch that device. Seems like we're getting some kind of touching action going on, but uh, not enough to substantiate it. Unfortunately, investigating the basement gave me no further results. So I then headed upstairs to try and contact the jilted wife. And little did I realize that this very encounter would end up becoming one of the most riveting interactions I've had with the paranormal in a very long time. All right, if there are any children here, I've got all kinds of cool little toys. Puppy, paddle ball. <laughs> I want to streak. Oh man, look at that. Ah, and I got a bunch of jacks. I want to speak now to the, the wife that was left here by her husband. I'm sure that was very traumatic for you. And I know you hung around here afterward hoping he'd come back and come and get you. So you stayed here just so we could find you. And you were here for years and years, weren't you? I'd like to talk to you about that if I can. I've got a device here called an Ovilus. If you, uh, you can actually use your energy to put words on this device. Tell me anything about your story. I'd love to know more. I'm a ghost behaviorist. Are you playing with that? Can you back away from it, please? Okay, can you touch it again? Can you touch that device again? What is going on? Pluto. Like the dog Pluto? Puppy? Eat? It's saying eat. Are you hungry? Wow, this thing's going nuts. Send? Or sent? Sent, sent. Now who's, I, I gotta know who's telling me these words. Is it the, is it the wife? Can you back away from that device? Oh my gosh. Was it the wife that said scent? Hit this meter if that was you. I want to know what you mean, scent. Pluto eat scent. Pluto eat scent. Well, when I see a word like scent, it reminds me of your husband that was sent off to the war. Am I right? Are you gonna use that device to tell me? Okay, you gotta back away. Gosh, every time. It's crazy how they both went off at kind of the same time. Yeah. Now I didn't quite realize it at the time, but pay attention because every time I say the word scent during this interaction, the run pot will go off. But when I see a word like sent, it reminds me of your husband that was sent off to the war. 
I know that your story, the, your husband was sent away um, and he never came back, did he? Do you know what happened to him? Now that you're on the other side? I'm sure there's like a guide or something that could tell you. I'm privy to that there are rules to the afterlife. Is that correct? All right, I've got this device right here. It's a, it's a digital recorder. If you speak into it, it can pick up your voice. It is very, very sensitive. What do you mean by the word scent? Okay, you got to use this device right here. Not that. You got to back away from that. Thank you. Okay, you got to tell me in this device, what do you mean by scent? Are you sad? Are you mad because the children talked to me on this device and said, Pluto, Pluto, like the dog Pluto? And you got angry about that. So no, you're very territorial of these kids, correct? All right, I'm gonna listen back to this. See if you said anything. What do you mean by the word scent? Not only does the spirit hit the meter after I say the word scent in the recording, but now watch what happens after I say it a second time. Did you guys tell me in this device, what do you mean by scent? Are you hungry? Am hold I on, hold on. Diet? Back away, please. This word definitely seems to be a trigger point for this spirit but nothing is compared to the response that soon follows when I start to psychologically break down her mental state. Are you hungry? Are you sad? Are you mad because the children talk? Are you sad? It's pretty clear that the spirit was trying to push me away, but the next word we got drives this point home even further. Are you mad because the children talked to me on this device and said Pluto, and you got angry about that? So no, you're very territorial of these kids, correct? No, you're very territorial of these kids, correct? This was an incredible turn of events. Once I started tiptoeing around her psychological issues, she basically told me to go away. Then once I called her off for being overbearing with the kids here, she got upset. No, you're very territorial with these kids, correct? And every time I say the word scent, you hit that device, don't you? Because I noticed you hit that again when I said this on here, what is scent? What does scent have to do? Is that a trigger word for you? Are you still trying to work through that pain? I know it's rough, I, I know. I, I've been in a bad place from, from breakups and I know how it goes. I totally know how it goes. When you're so in love with someone, they break up with you. Yeah, you know, it's rough, especially on the other side. When you have, you know, the ability to manipulate the uh, other side as you see fit. Now, as I started getting very personable with this spirit, watch what happens next in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Is this the wife trying to manifest right in front of me? When I first watched this footage, I was speechless, mainly because right before this happened, I was talking about how spirits are trying to manifest and use energy in the afterlife. When you have the ability to manipulate the uh, other side. And mere seconds later, this unexplainable light zips over the very device the wife is using to communicate with me. And if we look at the shape of the light, it almost appears as if a hand is trying to materialize. 
Now, yes, we were recording in front of a window, but there is no way that this light could be a reflection in the glass. At other times during this interaction, you can clearly see car light zipping past the window glass in the background, but this light is obviously not a reflection in the glass because it shines right over the wooden divider, which shows that this is not just a reflection in the glass. What's even more interesting is if we slow this footage down, the light oddly materializes, then blinks out of existence within only eight frames of video. Now, upon studying this footage even further, you'll notice that this hand is materializing in my direct line of sight. And last time I talked about the uncertainty principle that I've applied in the paranormal field, which states that the observer observing the paranormal will collapse the quantum state that they exist in. And upon studying this footage, we can finally see this principle at play. As she's trying to break into our physical realm, she only manages to exist for only eight frames of video because I am observing the very location that she's trying to burst into. So she is quickly cast out. And what's even more interesting is that this is probably the very first time no one has used night shot to capture a light like this manifesting in front of them. So for the very first time, we probably caught the real color of a spirit, which kind of looks like a Slimer ectoplasmy like being. And what makes this even more fascinating is that if you research the Islamic spiritual belief systems, you find that they associate younger type of spirits that are only a couple hundred years old with the color of green. And this is very interesting because the spirit that I was talking to is only about 150 years old. So she does fit into that time frame, which makes this green colored spirit theory actually plausible. Now, even though the wife is unable to show herself, I do, however, begin feeling her presence just seconds after this unexplainable light anomaly occurs. I I'm feeling very emotional right now. I don't know if that's... Like, it just, it's just kind of washed over me like this. It's very sad emotion. Now, this is a newer paranormal device called the Paranormal Pocket. You can ask it questions on your uh, smart device here, and it will answer back to you, uh, kind of like the Ovilus does. What is your name? Memories. Tom. Tom? Tom? Memories? Are you teaching the children? French. <laughs> Are you teaching them French? Are you still recovering from your husband leaving? Killed. Killed? Was he killed? Wow. So he died? Letter. Letter. Oh man, that's that's a crazy line of words. I don't know what to think of that. So spike this if I got that correct. Your husband was Tom and he was killed and you got a letter about that? Is that what happened? Come on, you gotta help me. So that's correct? All right, back away please. Thank you. Is that what you're trying to tell me with the word sent? You were sent a letter? Is that what you're trying to tell me? That would make sense. Because every time I said the word sent, and that said letter. Because the story was that he actually left or he never came back. But you're saying he died or was killed in action? Or do I have that completely wrong? I've got something I'm gonna bring up here that can help you with your, your pain and your suffering. Now I could just tell that whatever the wife's story was that she was in dire need of help here. And thankfully I had just the thing to help heal her of her ghostly mental state. So these are Tibetan singing bowls. This is based off the Tibetan religion with uh, sounds and vibrations. I use these to heal an area where there are spirits 
that are scarred by the past. Certain sounds and vibrations can actually heal that area and bring a lot more positivity to their life, to the, to the area, and, and bring it up in vibration. Now this red bowl right here, this is the, uh, what, what is known as the ground chakra. This is the base. This yellow bowl is the solar plexus, and this is the throat chakra. Together, they make a beautiful sound, which is interesting because they are the three chakras that actually lift and elevate the vibrations in an area. All right, so this is for you. If you like what you hear, and what it's doing to you. Please give me some sign on the meters. Am Vajra Satavaham. Am Vajra Satavaham. Am Mene Padme Ham. Thank you. I'm here all night, ladies and gentlemen. This simple act was definitely having a huge impact, and not just in the restaurant area either, because on the other side of the building in the ballroom, the meter I had set up began going absolutely nuts just seconds before I started playing the bowls. Now the camera was recording for over an hour in this area, and this was the only time this meter went off. Now I'm not sure exactly why this meter was going off when it's on the other side of the building, but the meter began spiking wildly for a full two or three minutes, which was amazing. Well, that is for you. I hope you find peace in the afterlife, and I hope it brings some closure to some of the pain that you've been going through. Never see that on a ghost hunting show on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Since my work with the jilted wife was done, it was time to try one last time to connect with the spirits in the ballroom. And yet again, the spirit decided to strike when I was doing another interview for the camera. All right, so this device right here is a motion sensor music box. So if you turn it on, it'll actually set the length and if something passes in front of it, the music box will go off and sound off. And this is gonna be an interesting device because music boxes were very prevalent back in the day. Oh, come on, man. Turn around, turn around. You like this? You like this? Huh? Got your attention now, huh? So you like music boxes, do ya? <laughs> I've been trying to get you to do this all night. How are you? My name is Chris. Yeah? Are you the servant lady? Are you a child? Are you Mr. Oliver? Can you spike that again? Okay, thank you, thank you. I just wanna make sure you're still here. Um, are you a woman? Were you a woman? Were you male? Are you male? <laughs> so are you, are you gonna tell me who you are? Did you run off again? All right, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put this meter over here. So if you pass through here, it'll go off. Isn't that neat, you like that? Yeah, it got your attention, huh? Well, I'm not, my name's Chris, I'm trying to figure out who you are. Can you light that up just so I know you're here again? Did you leave? Why don't you want to tell me anything about you? Did you know Mr. Oliver? 
I don't know why, but I'm getting a sense that this might be a child spirit, just the way it's spiking the meter, playing with us, and it's responding to a music box, which you know kids loved and had as a kid. All right, I'm gonna get my thermal imaging camera out here. See if there's any temperature fluctuations going on. Can you uh, touch this device again? Oh, 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 oh. Hey, you returned. Hello? <laughs> Can you touch the, um, the counter for me? Yeah. I was seeing if your handprint would show up. Now, are you a child? Come on, are you are you a little child? Yeah. Are you a boy? Yeah. Oh well, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for saying hello. My name is Chris. It's glad to meet your acquaintance. Well, thank you. Uh, did you used to stay here when this place was a boarding school? Yes. Interesting. Now, do you have any brothers? Okay, now only spike that when I ask a question, okay? Uh, or, or to confirm, yes. Uh, do you have any brothers or sisters? No brothers or sisters? It's just yourself? Are you still here? Can you can you hit that meter again? Or is it taking a lot out of you to, to spike that meter? Huh. And you're gone again, aren't you? Man, what in the heck? All right, I got this other device here. It's called an X-Cam. And if you stand in front of it, I can capture your, uh, your image. All right, I'm right here. If you stand next to me, you'll show up as a wireframe in my camera. Can you do that? Can you, can you stand next to me? All you have to do is stand right next to me. I wanna know you're here. Can you touch my hand? What can I call you? Can I call you Charlie or? So as you can see, as I was trying to coax the boy to touch my hand, a second figure appeared in the exact same area where I told him to show up in. It also appears as if this figure was standing on top of the bar, which if we judge the height of this figure, would roughly be the same size of a young child. And it's also incredible that this second figure only appeared briefly in the same location I told him to appear in. I'm feeling cold like right around my feet. I don't know if that's just my mind though. All right, well, I think that's probably all we're gonna be able to get out of them tonight, unfortunately, so. Cause I'll just pack up and head home. I had an amazing night at the Oliver House. 10 years I had been waiting to get in here and it did not disappoint. I can't remember the last time I've gotten so much evidence during one investigation. Oh, oh, there we go. And the night ended up developing in ways I never imagined. Oh, come on, man. From interactions with former servants. Whoa, whoa, whoa. To various children. Come on, are you, are you a little child? And a wife that was getting quite upset with me. <laughs> then upon reviewing our evidence, it was just one jaw-dropping piece of evidence after the next. There are indeed many different spirits roaming these halls, which gave me very positive experiences here. And I'm just glad knowing that I was able to help out a few of them with the tools at my disposal. I still feel like I barely scratched the surface with all the spirits here, and I hope one day I'll get the chance to come back and return to the Oliver House.